Hi guys, Dr. Jillard again. Uh, we're moving on to something more challenging, and I, the thing I can think of is the sphenoid bone. It's quite challenging. We'll probably include the orbit, so this is going to be a kind of a tricky one here. Uh, let's move our little friend, Mr. Sphenoid Bone. Notice, by the way, he's a one-piece bone. And we're looking at front view would be like this of him. But let's push him aside for the side for uh, the time being. Um, let's take a look at this side. I've got the uh, what's missing? There's a pop quiz. What's missing? Zygomatic bone's gone. But now here from a typical side view of the skull, lateral view, uh, we can see that the sphenoid, which is part of the neural cranium, uh, we can see them all here in yellow. So this is the greater wing of the sphenoid. Uh, it's also called the temporal process of the greater wing. This is part of the pterygoid process. More specifically, it's called the lateral pterygoid plate. And even more specifically, it's the lateral part of the lateral pterygoid plate. Get a little more light in here. You can also see there's a very important fissure here, pterygomaxillary fissure. That communicates with the dreaded and feared pterygopalatine fossa. Actually, Bob Acklin has a very good free video on YouTube about this dreaded and feared fossa. Uh, it's like a communication, it's like a, a circuit box where it's got all sorts of nerves, vessels, and ganglia a branching. And it, uh, it's, it's, it's clinically important because it's, it sits next to, you can't see all of it, but this part, I forgot to mention this on the, the video on the maxilla. Uh, this is the posterior part of the maxilla here, uh, but this is called the maxillary tuberosity or tuberosity of the maxilla very thin bone right here. If I poke a hole in that, where will I be? I'll be right I'll be right into the maxillary sinus, which we're going to see in a minute. And here's another maxilla quiz. What's this? Well, I know it's the maxilla. That's the orbital portion of the maxilla bone there. Okay, but let's keep our focus here on the sphenoid. Now let's go in the orbit here. Remember, zygomatic bones removed, but again, we can see the how the greater wing of the sphenoid, the temporal surface, comes around the corner here, and it continues on and makes up, what's this? That's the orbital part of the sphenoid bone. Greater, It's still greater wing. Lesser wing is up here. Lesser wing of the sphenoid. Lesser wing has the, what's that hole? That's the optic the foramen, optic canal there for the passage of the optic nerve. What vessel? Ophthalmic artery. I'm not going to go over those. Uh, yeah, we will because they're part of the sphenoid. Let's jump over to this one. Um, there's a very big suture, or suture. There's a very big uh, hole right here. What's that called? Superior orbital fissure. Not the superorbital fissure. Superior orbital fissure. Uh, we talked about this one here because uh, it's still bordered by the greater wing. So what's this one? That's the inferior orbital fissure. Uh, well, who does that communicate with? Right here communicates with the... Let's let you see. Okay, it's not the temporal fossa, it's the infratemporal fossa. Okay, the middle portion communicates with the temporal fossa, and the back part communicates with the pterygopalatine fossa. What's this communicate with? What was this again? S superior orbital fissure. That's the middle cranial fossa. Okay. Um, now, is that is that part of the sphenoid right here? In the piriform aperture? No, remember we said that's part of the vulmar bone, which forms what? That forms the inferior bony part of the nasal palate. Um, okay, I think that's all we can see from here. Let's flip over. Inferior, a lot of your skulls just have this, so I want to cover this as well. So this is an inferior view. Here's the hard palate. Uh, there's the vulmar again. What's that? That's a perpendicular plate of the palatine bone. So here's our sphenoid again. This is the pterygoid process. 
Uh, we've covered this already, only this time this is the medial surface of the lateral pterygoid plate. This we haven't covered. What's that? That's the medial pterygoid plate. It's got a little tip. It's not very good on this model. It should have a little point coming off called the hamulus of the sphenoid. Hamulus of the sphenoid. There's another little point of sphenoid right here. What's that called? That's the spine of the sphenoid. Okay, we can see a couple holes. What's this hole? Foramen ovale. What's this one? Foramen spinosum. What comes out of foramen ovale? V3. I'll leave it at that. You can figure that out. What comes out of here? Branches of V3, uh, but more importantly, the middle meningeal artery comes uh, through that. It's foramen spinosum. Okay, now this, this part right here, this is the body of the sphenoid. We talked a little a bit about that. We have an articulation here. Was this a suture? Or we talked about this. This is a synchondrosis. It's made of hyaline cartilage, or made of, uh, yeah, hyaline cartilage when you're up until about 25 to 30. Uh, this synchondrosis is important. Longitudinal growth of the skull occurs here. Uh, the name of it is the sphenoid occipital synchondrosis. Okay, let's go here. So now right in the kind of the crotch, for lack of a better word, uh, of the between the medial and lateral pterygoid plates, you have the pterygoid fossa. Pterygoid fossa. Okay, I think I got everything. Um, I guess we should do sutures. We've done these before, but what's a suture? That is a real suture. That's the sphenosquamous suture. Sphenosquamous suture. Let's go back to the side of the skull. What's the suture here? Let's put this down. What's the suture? Sphenosquamous sphenoparietal suture, sphenoparietal suture. What's this suture? Frontal sphenous, or frontal sphenal suture. And what's this suture here? That's the sphenozygomatic suture, sphenozygomatic suture. Okay, it's time to dig a little deeper. So on this wonderful skull, I'm going to pull most of the facial skeleton away. Let's set it over here. So now we can see. We can see the sphenoid bone even more, right? You want me to pull off the vomer? Let's pull this vomer off as well. Okay. So now... We see some little legs almost, right? We can actually stand on these legs. What are those legs? Collectively, they're called the pterygoid processes. Okay. And we can hit those again. There's the orbital part of the sphenoid. What's that? Superorbital fissure, superior orbital fissure. Okay, wonderful. Let's take a look through here. Okay, now we can see some holes I might I'm debating. Now let's go through these holes so you can see them. Because I have another one, free one here, standing by itself. Okay, what's that hole right there? Now we talked about that. That's the optic canal. Now what's that one right there that we can see for the first time? F foramen rotundum. Foramen rotundum. And beneath it right there? That's the pterygo, uh, pterygoid canal. Pterygoid canal. You can see them on both sides. You can see foramen rotundum and the pterygoid canals. Okay, what goes through foramen rotundum? The V2, maxillary nerve. What goes through the pterygoid canal? Don't forget this one. This is pretty easy. Nerve to the pterygoid canal. 
Okay, what's that hole right there? From an ovale. We already said what we'll, we'll goes through there. B3. What's that one again? From and spinosum. What goes through there? Branches of V3, but more importantly, the middle, men middle meningeal artery. Okay. Now we can see. Now, this is not quite typical, but we can actually see. There's the body. Remember that hole right there? That's, that's for the model. That's where the vomer connects. But we can see the sphenoid sinuses there. Might as well take a look at this bone as well. Take a time out. What's this white bone called? That's the ethmoid bone. Turn the skull this way. What's that white part there? That's the orbital process. What's that hole right there? That's the superior ethmoid foramen. What's that suture called? Frontal ethmoid suture. What's that one called? Squamoethmoid, or I'm sorry, the sphenoethmoid suture. Now we have, we were talking about the hard palate earlier. Okay, what's that right there? That's the perpendicular plate of the hard palate. And on each side, those are the middle nasal concha. Middle nasal concha. How come that doesn't extend all the way down, that perpendicular plate? Because remember, that's made out of cartilage. It's like a triangular uh, piece of cartilage where the apex posteriorly goes in between that and what's the bony part of the inferior bony part of the nasal septum? That's the vomar sitting right there. Okay, so we got the ethmoid. That's about all we need to know here. What's on top of the ethmoid? That's the cribriform plate. And that's actually often considered part of the neurocranium. Okay, so I think we're ready to... Let's take this apart even more here. I'm going to pull right off the frontal skeleton, or off the frontal bone and the ethmoid. Let's get rid of them. Okay, um, let's get you warmed up here. What's that? Lateral pterygoid plate, lateral surface of it. What's that? Medial pterygoid plate. Okay, so well, let's, uh, this is a new view, so let's take a look. Okay, those are the superior orbital, or superior orbital fissures there again. Uh, now we can see the sphenoid sinuses quite nicely. Uh, this is an anterior view, obviously. You guys agree with that? Yes, yeah, anterior view. If we go up from a more superior bird's eye view, this is the greater or the lesser wing of the sphenoid here. Okay, and I don't know if you can see this because of shadows. Maybe I can tilt this forward. That's the Salaturcica. Dorsum cellae is right there. Cella tersica is there. And I think that's about all I can see from here. Let's go ahead now uh, and pull it right out and take a look at it. Okay, now here's our anterior view. It's kind of like a little guy, isn't it? Like a little Star Wars creature, maybe? Uh, it's the pterygoid um, processes are the legs. See, but let's turn it to the side and look at this. What does it look like here? Yeah, it looks like a sacrum here, right? There's the coccyx right here. My pinky's touching. Well, that's really the what? The sphenoid spine, the spine of the sphenoid. But yeah, to me, it looks like a little, uh, little pelvis here from the side. Anyway, so that structure is the, again, let's get us caught up. That's the temporal surface of the greater wing of the sphenoid. That's the lateral surface of the lateral pterygoid plate. Now, let's look at the posterior view for the first time. Remember, it's got to be standing on its legs. 
you know, how do you, if you have a test and this thing's just laying there, how do you acclimate it? Um, well, get them up on his legs. Find the pterygoid processes, which are right here. These things sticking up, and those are its legs. So stand it up on its legs. And there you have an anterior view. You can see its little nose there. And you can see the big condyles. Neighbor's dog is a little wild this morning. Sorry about that. And now from a posterior view, stand him up on his legs, this is a posterior view. Now this portion up on top that you see, that's the dorsum cellae again. Uh, these nerve, these big canals here, those are canals for the internal carotid artery, so those are important. All of this structure here, that's all body of the sphenoid. Okay, what's that hole right there? Foramen rotundum. If I go up just a little bit, then we can see, oh, 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 oh yeah, that's right. Foramen ovale is right there. Spinosum is right there. Okay. Now this surface right in here where my thumb is, some call that the cerebral surface of the greater wing of the sphenoid. Now, what's on the other side of it? Let's turn it around to the front. Why it's the right there? Oops better do that with the software right there that's the orbital part of the sphenoid if I turn it to the side that's the temporal part of the sphenoid it's all greater wing that's all greater wing of the sphenoid okay and you can see that the slits quite nicely what are those superior orbital fissures and now you can see what are those those are the optic canals. Optic canals. There's the tuberculum cellae right there. Okay, that's kind of the front of the cella tersica. There's the hypophyseal fossa down there. That's where the pituitary sits, right? From our neuroanatomy, we know that. And there's that bat shaped bone again. And that's the lesser wing of the sphenoid. It's still body in the middle. Now if we look carefully, we can see some little points coming off. It looks like a little manta ray to me in this uh, view as well. There's the eyes right there, and there's the kind of front of the manta ray. Anyway, those little points are called the anterior clinoid processes. Those points there, if you look real closely, kind of lateral to the tuberculum cellae, those are the middle clinoid processes and those points right there those are the posterior clinoid processes okay that's all I wanted to say uh, about the sphenoid bone and let's uh, continue on our journey we'll see you in the next video